In the last lecture, we talked about natural language inference, how to tell if a statement is supported or not given some evidence. Let's now talk about how this sort of tool could have a urgent, important, real-world application. We've heard a lot about fake news in the last five years, and it's not just a way of disparaging reporting you don't like. It's a real problem. People making an honest mistake, distorting facts, or deliberate disinformation campaigns by nation-states. There's a broad typology of fake news, and natural language processing can't help with all of them. Some, like doctoring images, are better suited to computer vision. NLP, though, can help in a number of ways, detecting when an author has a particular ideological stance, which can be detected by how they frame an issue, using death tax for inheritance taxes, for example, or when information is presented partially or with clickbait headlines. But we're going to focus today on outright wrong statements. Perhaps the most influential dataset in this space is called Fever, short for Fact, Extraction, and Verification. This dataset was created by showing crowd workers a Wikipedia article and then those crowd workers needed to write a claim that is either supported or refuted by the Wikipedia article. As you write the claim, you need to select uh, the relevant uh, evidence to either support or refute that claim. The pipeline that has developed for this task works as follows. You get a claim in, you try to find passages that are relevant in a trusted source of information, like Wikipedia for instance, you can use DPR or TFIDF to find relevant documents, and then those documents become the premises for something that looks a lot like an LI. Pick the best evidence for the claim, feed it into the NLI techniques we talked about in the last video, and then output whether the claim is supported, refuted, or if there isn't enough information to decide one way or another. This should remind you of how things work in question answering. The question, or the claim, is the query that lets you find the relevant information, and then, given that evidence, serves as the basis for your final decision. Say whether the claim is true or false. This should remind you of buzzing. But what's particularly challenging about fact-checking is that it's an arms race. In the Cranfield paradigm of question answering, at least, you don't have adversaries generating ever more difficult questions once you've figured out how to answer that last batch. But that definitely isn't how fighting fake news works. Once you have a mallet to whack disinformation, new strategies emerge. This is something called the disinformation arms race. So if we want to actually make this useful, we need a machine learning framework that mirrors this process. This isn't how Fever was constructed, though. Many of the claims are relatively simplistic, like the hypothesis-only baselines that cause problems for SNLI. You as a human can look at many of these claims without deep knowledge of Woody Allen or Tipper Gore and know if they're true or not. There's not a lot of skill needed to figure out that these aren't true. And if you do a more in-depth analysis of what these claims look like, there's a lot of repetition, reusing the same logical operators again and again and again. Is only, did not, was not, incapable of, is incapable, was only, has only. One of the techniques that we proposed uh, to improve the quality of fact-checking data was to try to make this more of a game, like the Manchester paradigm of question answering. Players write claims and mark evidence, just like Fever, but you only get points if your claims are harder than the average claim. So how do you know if they're harder than average? Players see two claims at once. One is true and one is false. They can ask to get more information about either of the claims, a little bit like waiting for more clues in the quiz bowl setting, and then pick which one is false. Here's what the actual interface looks like. Time counts down, and you can ask for additional information. If you can identify which is a fake claim just from the claim alone, this isn't a very good NLI example. Just like the hypothesis-only baselines that we talked about in the last video. If the voter needs more clues, then that suggests that it's harder.
The clues come from the retrieval system, so it also gives that part of the system a test. If the claims make it hard to find the relevant evidence, that suggests that the authors are doing something right. It more closely emulates the disinformation arms race. If you see a tactic used by a claim that fooled you, you can use that in future claims that you write. If enough authors use the same tricks, though, the system will learn how to detect the tactics and you have to do something else. So how does the authoring work? People are asked to write a claim about an entity just like Fever. But instead of just writing a claim with no feedback, you see the evidence that gets pulled up. And the overlapping words are highlighted in yellow. And you're not allowed to submit a claim that has the top evidence retrieved by the system. So if your claim is too easy, you need to work a little bit harder. Over time, the quality of the claims should increase and will build up a really difficult verification data set. And our data set is harder than fever, especially at pulling up the appropriate evidence. But the gap between fever and the Fool Me Twice data set shrinks if you use a DPR retriever, which suggests that we need to swap out the retrieval mechanism. But because I worked on this while I was on sabbatical and I was too lazy to get dense retrieval to work in pure JavaScript or stand up a server, we just have TFIDF. Hopefully we can improve it soon. So let's take a look at the kinds of claims that got written. I'm a little biased because this is our data set, but I think the claims are pretty interesting. Like the Demanef ontology we talked about before, there's temporal reasoning, where you need to know that 523 is before the 10th century. Uh, there's more involved reasoning, where you need to know things like that the daughter of your cousin is also your cousin. There's paraphrasing that we saw before in the NLI ontology. But because fact-checking also has this retrieval component, there's also distraction, which wasn't included in the Demarnef ontology. Here's a claim that makes the retriever grab stuff about Neuhauser's other business dealings, but doesn't find information about when he worked at a bank. The last strategy I want to mention is that sometimes Wikipedia disagrees with itself. Here's an example where the author found evidence that says one thing, but the retriever often finds the exact opposite. This shows how fact-checking is intrinsically harder if you don't have a single piece of text as your evidence, as your premise. Then not only do you have to find the right evidence to support or refute a claim, you need to judge which of several competing or perhaps conflicting viewpoints you should trust. And that ain't easy, even for humans. How do you know which media outlets are worth trusting? And this isn't even a question of intention. Sometimes journalists make mistakes. Sometimes information on Wikipedia is out of date. And to step on my soapbox for a bit, this is not just an exciting research area, but an important way for natural language processing to support society. Computers and humans have different skill sets for examining sources of information. Humans can reason and see subtlety, but computers can scour all of the internet in seconds. Figuring out how to get these two different skill sets to communicate and work together is important, not just for the progress in artificial intelligence, but also for the health and vibrancy of democracy. While people blame social media and their recommendation algorithms for much of the incivility of the last few years, natural language processing and artificial intelligence more generally can help repair some of these harms but it's up to us to make the necessary tools and to get people to actually use them. This is just a single lecture from a course. YouTube likes to show you these videos out of order, but if you go to the course webpage linked below, you can see the lectures in the right order, and you can get resources like homeworks or suggested readings. You can also visit quanta.org if you want to learn about our systems for creating computers that can answer questions, where quanta stands for question answering is not a trivial activity.